Chapter 15 How they managed to survive this leap into the unknown, Martine later had no idea. One minute they were in the creepy clearing, and the next Jimmy had launched himself directly at the cliff face, and Martine was being sucked at by gravity and strangled, mauled, and scratched by hairy vines and vicious thorny branches. At last they came to a tumbling halt. They were in complete darkness. It was some time before Martine's eyes adjusted to the light, and she was able to take in the fact that she was still on the giraffe's back, and still in one piece. It was even longer before she was able to figure out a way to slide safely to the ground. Back on solid earth, she felt small and inconsequential again, but also elated. For the time being, at least, she and Jimmy had outwitted the poachers. She took her grandmother's flashlight from the pocket of her windbreaker and prepared to expect the unexpected. She had willingly climbed onto the back of a wild giraffe, even though they were probably very good reasons why no one else in history had ever attempted to ride one, and had been whisked away to a deeply unpleasant place with an even more unpleasant tree. Then, just when she thought things couldn't possibly get any more surreal, the white giraffe had hurled himself at a mountain. They could be anywhere. She switched on her flashlight. Relief flooded through her. Nothing fantastical had occurred, at least nothing involving magic. And Jimmy hadn't actually jumped through bare rock. He'd simply leaped through the veil of creepers into the crevice that lay behind it. Because the crevice ran at an angle, almost parallel to the cliff itself, and was disguised by foliage and the great twisted bulk of the tree. It was invisible from the outside. Martine marveled that even the animals had ever found it. Not that many of them had, if the silence was anything to go by. Drawing a wide arc with her flashlight beam, she discovered that she was in an exquisite little valley of perhaps an acre, surrounded on three sides by high sloping walls of sheer granite, and on the fourth by massive chestnut boulders stacked five deep. The effect was of being on the inside of an uneven pyramid. The mountainside wall leaned at such an angle that it overhung the boulders like a ledge, creating a roof over the valley. Seen from below, it was obvious that even if someone were to climb the mountain and glance down, they still wouldn't notice the valley. It was completely hidden. That wasn't the amazing part, though. Judging by the rectangle of blue-black sky she could see, a fluke of nature had ensured that there was enough space between the ledge and the boulders to allow sunlight into the valley for at least part of every day. That explained the presence of several acacia trees, a favorite food of the giraffe, the lush carpet of grass, and the fragrant white orchids springing from the valley's floor. There was also a pool of water in a hollowed rock, fed by a clear stream. Martine knew that she was standing in the white giraffe's secret sanctuary. Jimmy had everything he needed to survive here. Everything, that is, except love and company. No wonder he was so lonely. She ran a soothing hand over Jimmy and marveled once again that he stood still under her touch. If he would let her, she planned to give him all the love and company he could possibly want. He need never be lonely again. In the meantime, a million questions ran through her mind. Who had first discovered the secret valley? Had any other human being ever been here? Did anyone apart from the animals know it existed? She set out to explore the valley perimeter, combing the walls with her flashlight. That's when she saw it, a black triangle between two rocks. It looked like some sort of tunnel. Immediately, she felt an overwhelming urge to investigate. She was well aware that there were probably smarter things she could do in her present situation than go poking around in black holes. But try as she might, she couldn't think of any. She checked on the white giraffe. He was over by the stream, drinking deeply. His front legs spread wide, his silvery nose wrinkled against the bubbles. Martine debated what to do. What if she'd used up all her luck for one evening? But there was something almost magnetic about the space. She felt as if it were pulling her toward it, calling her even. 
She had the oddest sense that going into the tunnel was what she was meant to do. That that's what she'd end up doing whether she decided to or not. Retying her bootlaces purposefully, Martine walked on uncertain legs toward the black hole. Her heart was in her mouth. It was a tunnel, one that smelled strongly of wet rock and animals that dwell in dank, dark places, spiders, baboons, and the like. Leopards enjoy those places as well, but Martine consoled herself with the thought that Jimmy would hardly have lived as long as he had if a carnivore resided close by. After one last attempt to talk herself into staying in the lovely valley, she stepped inside. The tunnel was not much taller than she was, and even a small adult would have had to crouch, but gradually it widened and became less claustrophobic. After a while, it turned back on itself. She was beneath the mountain now. From there, the ground rose sharply in a series of steep steps, slick with froggy algae. Martine put the flashlight between her teeth and scrambled up in an undignified fashion. She made a mental note to smuggle her giraffe fur, grass, and slime-colored jeans into the washing machine before her grandmother noticed them. The vegetable garden excuse was not going to work a second time. She was halfway up the last step when a hideous screech echoed from the chamber above her. Martine nearly flew over backward. Her light flashed around madly as she grabbed a ledge to save herself. Within seconds, the air was filled with a blizzard of flapping wings and high-pitched squeaks. She had unleashed a colony of bats. In England, Martine had known girls who went around saying that they had a phobia about bats, even though they lived in suburbia, and had never encountered them outside Dracula films. She herself had never much cared for the idea of them. But since her arrival in Africa, she'd come to realize that they were actually quite cute. Far from being blood-sucking vampires, they were just flying mice that enjoyed fruit. Until, that is, they got caught in your hair. Ugh! spluttered Martine as she tried to disentangle their scratchy feet and clammy wings without getting bitten. Ugh! When the black whirlwind subsided, she picked up her flashlight, dusted herself off, and saw that she was in a cave, one the height and size of a small church. But what struck her as strange was that the feeling in the cave was different from that of the tunnel, which was simply damp and cold. The cave had a distinct atmosphere. Martine took a lungful of its dense, heavy air and was immediately swamped with the same light-headed time-travel sensation that she'd felt in some of the cathedrals and historic buildings her parents had taken her to in England. There, too, she'd had a real sense of the generations who'd occupied them before. It was almost as if certain people in certain eras made their mark on a place so thoroughly that their spirit never left. But why should she feel that here? Moving cautiously so as not to alarm the bats, Martine shined her flashlight around the cave. What she saw next made her cry out in wonder. Every wall and every rock was covered in paintings. Some of them were nothing more than crude charcoal line drawings, faded with the years. Some were stick figures, and some were so rich in texture and hue that they seemed to leap from the walls like naked flames. But every one of them lived and breathed. They spoke to her from across the ages as clearly as if their creators were standing in front of her, telling her of battles lost and won, feasts and famines, times of pestilence and times of plenty. Martine sat down onto a rock. Half of her felt like a child at Christmas. The other half felt dizzy. What was happening? What was this all about? Jimmy, the kudu, and now the cave pictures? What did it all mean? Oh, if only she'd been able to have a proper conversation with Grace on that first day in Africa. Martine was sure that Grace held the key to at least some part of the mystery. She had, after all, known about the gift. So much was happening so fast. Martine tried to remember her life with her mum and dad. Already bits of it were fading. One thing she did recall was being petrified of the dark and spending sleepless nights convinced that something monstrous lurked under her bed. Several times she'd even crept into her parents' room. 
Yet here she was, alone in a cave in the dead of night, and she felt completely unafraid. Confused, yes, but not afraid. Nor did she feel alone. It was as though her mum and dad were watching her, as though they knew about her and Jimmy. She smiled to herself in the dark. She knew that she owed much of her newfound confidence to the white giraffe. Loving Jimmy had given her a reason to smile when she was sure that she'd never smile again, and being brave for Jimmy, as she'd had to tonight, had made her reach deep inside for some strong, steady part of herself that she hadn't even known existed until then. In return, the white giraffe had overcome his fear of humans to save her twice and allow her to ride him. If he hadn't trusted her, he wouldn't have brought her here. She vowed that as long as she lived, she would never tell anyone about the secret valley. If the paintings were ever found, Jimmy's sanctuary would be flooded with reporters, scientists, and tourists. The ancient spirits would be chased away. The world would come trampling in. Martine stared at the paintings. One of her mum's books had contained pictures just like these. They'd been painted by the sand people, as the Bushmen were known, centuries before the white man ever came, using iron ore, china clay, and ox gaw. She wondered if these pictures, too, had been painted by the Bushmen, or if some other tribe had done them, perhaps Tende's tribe, the Zulus. She got up off the rock and went over for a closer look. Her head was still spinning, and she still had millions of questions, but mostly she just felt lucky to be able to witness this. Holding the flashlight above her head, she walked around the cave. The red, gold, and black images unfolded before her, like scenes from an old sepia-toned movie. Martine was entranced. Despite their simplicity, they conveyed lives of great beauty and sorrow. There were fantastic scenes of animal migration, tribal dances, and men confronting rhinos and elephants, armed only with bows and arrows. She was halfway around when she noticed a painting of a giraffe. It was one of a series, most of which featured herds of giraffes surrounded by men with spears. In each new picture, the herds became smaller and smaller, and more and more bloody giraffes lay on the ground. Soon there were just two left. Then they, too, were on the ground, and a man lay on the ground with them. But it was when she saw the next painting that Martine's head really started whirling. It showed a white giraffe suckling from an elephant. At first she was sure that the coloring of the giraffe was merely a trick of the light, but when she compared it to the previous images, it was definitely paler. She traced the giraffe with her fingertips. The rock was cold to the touch, but somehow it, too, had a kind of energy. She had to force herself to look at the final picture, and when she did, the emotion was overwhelming. The hue of the image was different, almost as if it had been created with a metallic paint. In it, a child was riding a white giraffe. To the left of them was a fire, and to the right was a line of animals of different species. The child who can ride a white giraffe will have power over all the animals, Tinde had told her when she arrived, and although some dreamy part of her had entertained fantasies about riding Jimmy, she'd never really thought about what it meant because she had never believed for a second it might come true. Why would she imagine she'd be able to ride a giraffe? Nobody else in the world ever had. The child who can ride a white giraffe will have power over all the animals. For the second time that evening, Martine's knees gave way and she had to sit down on another rock. Grace had been right. The forefathers had known she was coming.